specific ex- example, Ron, I'm going to, I'm going to reach out to you. Uh, you mentioned uh, obviously your global massive element, the service of uh, the army, 18,000 men and women in your, uh, in your environment alone. I can't imagine the the hundreds of thousands of threat vectors uh, that you're trying to deal with on a uh, on a uh, a massive scale. Everything must be industrial strength. Give us an example of one thing that you'd like to highlight that you're pushing the agenda forward. Yeah, uh, Luke. So when you, I I appreciate you you uh, appreciate the scope and scale of the Army. Almost 1.4 million users worldwide, and so. When you when you look at that, uh, the attack surface is quite large as as we do things. So the army um, is absolutely the army has uh, Secretary Christine Wormuth uh, published uh, the Army Digital Transformation Strategy, and that is that is really focused on. It's got. I'm going to hit some higher and then dive down to answer your specific question. Sure. It's got three overall objectives. One is modernization, which envisions a digitally enabled, data-driven army propelled by digital transformation. The second is reform, uh, which is really about making sure that every dollar, every resource, the people in the army is the best value and that the army is very good stewards of the resources. And then number three is people and partnerships, because as mentioned by a couple other panelists, it's absolutely about the talent and the competition for talent. But when I come back to that modernization piece, um, if I think about some of the key lines of effort, accelerate cloud native adoption by unifying the Army's enterprise and tactical clouds, leverage data as a strategic asset to achieve interoperability and get to decision making, and then elevate the Army cybersecurity posture uh, and really embracing those zero trust principles that are in line with the DOD zero trust architecture, which is really the overarching thing the Department of Defense is doing and and Admiral Chase uh, made a a reference to it. But when we think about specifically in in the areas, a big accomplishment over this last year uh, was the Army adoption of Microsoft Office 365. We call Mm -hmm. it Army 365. And it was born out of a, 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 a pilot program called Enterprise IT as a Service that Microsoft built this environment and they built it uh, with absolutely zero trust principles from the ground up. Mm. And and we, we've we now over in 2022, we've adopted that army-wide, we transitioned to it. And, and it is the largest Office 365 uh, tenant in the army and it's the second one, second largest one that Microsoft has in the world. So it's wow. so it's quite ex, quite extensive. I use that as an example, and it has gone extremely well. The migration to it, and and it is uh, all of the capabilities, the productivity suites, the Microsoft Teams, mm. how we really uh, enable uh, remote work and collaboration is is really outstanding. What we have with Army 365. Ron, is that completed at this point? It is on the unclassified network. Okay. And we will be in the coming next 12 to 24 months moving to the secret network uh, to uh, to adopt a similar capability in the secret environment. 